So Survivor Series is this Sunday, and ultimately we're going to find out who the next WWE World Heavyweight Champion is going to be. And a lot of you surely are none too pleased about the thought, the prospect, the clear and present possibility that the champion at the end of Sunday night is going to be Roman Reigns. It's just what it is. A lot of you don't like it. A lot of you look at it from any number of different perspectives. Number one, it's a confirmation to you, rightly or wrongly, I think more recently wrongly, if anything, uh, compared to previous history at least, that he's just another big muscle dude and that's ultimately what Vince wants and it doesn't matter about talent or this and that. He's big. There you go. That's why they're putting the belt on him. A lot of you don't like that. A lot of you look at him and say, he's not that good in the ring. He can't really talk on the mic. What is there? The character is bland. And now we're going to make him the world champion at the time where there's not a whole lot of interesting things with the company anyways. I don't need this soft kitty crap from this world champion. Some of you look at him and you see the emergence of John Cena 2.0. And there are certain elements to how he's been presented in recent months that could lead you to believe in that possibility. The fact that the WWE, with the breast cancer awareness and other things, they try to put Roman Reigns front and center just like they do John Cena. You see the possibilities. You see the comparison, the similarities in how they're presented. You see how Roman Reigns is winning most of his things. He's coming out on top. He's being presented a certain way, just like John Cena has been for a decade. You, know, you see these mistakes of the past. You're learning from the past, and you're automatically associating Roman Reigns with those John Cena characteristics, especially when you factor in something else, is that a lot of the male audience doesn't want to cheer for somebody that the kids like. I think it's one of those things that it's bad enough that a lot of male adult fans are already watching a kitty based kitty geared kitty generated product so they don't want to feel like they're cheering for a kitty champ. That's just the way it is. And they look at Roman Reigns similar to John Cena as a representation of a kitty champ and that's why a lot of the male adult fans are rebelling against him especially the hardcores because they view him as a John Cena type of champion in that way, especially when you look at the next component, and that is a lot of the women have really started to fall for Roman, and they swoon for him. They're like, oh my god, he's so pretty. His hair is his tattoos, his complexion, his muscles, the way the water just drips on his body is fabulous. So now a lot of the female fans are getting really behind Roman Reigns, and the male fans, for a multitude of different reasons, because that's happening don't like that. They're jealous of Roman Reigns getting all that female attention that they can't get. Or they're jealous of the fact that their girls are swooning all over Roman Reigns. Or they wish they could be him and as a result they don't like him because they can't be him. Or also in part it's this is that they don't like their women that they're with so to piss them off they say no fuck you you like Roman I'll like somebody else. That's the male female cats dogs type of bullshit that we see every day in our lives. So a lot of fans are looking at this and they're all upset about the possibility of a baby face Roman Reigns winning the belt. And I understand it. I don't fully agree with it, but I don't fully disagree with it either. Because as I've said in a previous video, I don't really think the timing is right for Roman Reigns to win the championship. Frankly, I don't think the belt should even be decided at Survivor Series on Sunday. But that's just my opinion and that was discussed in a previous video. So what happens is, is you have some fans that are starting to prepare themselves for the possibility, even though you could still have somebody like Sheamus cash in the money in the bank and be the champion at the end of the night, which is a distinct possibility. They're preparing themselves for the possibility and trying to do that in a way that is palpable to them and is acceptable to them and is predict predictably the case amongst hardcore wrestling fans. It always seems like the answer is to take a baby face and make them a villain, make them a heel. It's kind of like what Tony and I, if you remember back in the day, used to talk about a lot, especially me, but Tony as well. We talk about when in doubt, heal them out. If you don't have a lot to do with them on this side of the fence, you can always have the chance to do more interesting and compelling things because there are fewer barriers, fewer restrictions. If you make a guy a villain, make him a heel. And as a result, a lot of people don't like the type of white meat baby face that Roman Reigns is. They don't see him really doing a lot. So they want to hate him, they don't want to cheer him, they want to boo him, so now they want to be given reasons, in theory, to not like him. 
real legitimate reasons to boo him, real legitimate reasons to cheer other people. So they say automatically, if he's not working as a babyface, he's going to be a disaster as a babyface champion. So when in doubt, if he's going to be the champion, at least heal him out and do something different with the character. And I get this, and sometimes this approach makes sense. For example, Seth Rollins, when he broke apart the shield, they chose the right person to heal out. They ultimately did. They made the right decision. They went in a completely different direction with Seth Rollins' character. They had to in order to make it work as a heel. And it kind of did. I mean, it never fully worked, but there's, that's for a multitude of reasons, whatever the case might be. But at that time, when in doubt with Seth Rollins, heal him out because that was a way to do something different with his character, establish some type of real character, give him some legs on his own, make people take notice and pay attention to him. That's ultimately what the WWE did, and to a certain level, it at least somewhat worked. But I don't necessarily know that that's the right thing to do here with Roman Reigns. I don't think turning him heel is the answer. I really don't. I, I just don't. And there's a number of different reasons for this. Is number one, we really don't have a lot of traditional clear-cut baby faces and heels to begin with. So the whole notion of turning them heel is going to make it better, is going to make them more interesting. I dispute that notion strongly. Because if he was poorly booked as a babyface, let's face it, and he kind of has been, what makes you think automatically that he's going to be booked any fucking better as a heel? There is no guarantee. There's no concrete proof, proof that that's automatically going to happen, or that's a surety whatsoever. If you just sit there and book him basically the same with very few tweaks and very few changes of the character, and you keep the presentation about 95% similar, you haven't really changed the character at all. You haven't really given people any more reasons to hate him. The people that already hate him are still going to hate him. The people that want to like him are still going to like him. And this is the whole problem with the WWE, is they want to kayfabe it, but then they don't. They want you to hate certain guys like other guys, but then they really don't. They really don't care. And if you're not going to do something completely and totally different with Roman Reigns, just slapping a suit on him alone and making him a heel isn't necessarily going to work. And on top of that, let's say, oh, you align him with Triple H, you align him with the authority. Well, at the end of the day, that ended up being a bit of a burden and a weight that brought down Seth Rollins' title reign, in my opinion, as a heel. The authority angle as a whole is played out and hasn't been well utilized at all for a long stretch of time, especially throughout pretty much all of 2015. Now we're going to introduce Roman Reigns into that boring-ass fucking mix and expect the results to be any fucking different? Again, it just doesn't really make a whole lot of sense to me. It really doesn't. You know, here, here's my thing again, too. For the people that say he's boring as a babyface or there are other guys that are better, okay, let's look at it this way, objectively and fairly. Rollins is out of the mix because he's got a knee injury. Let's look at some of the other guys. You've got Dean Ambrose, better on the mic, doesn't look as impressive as Roman Reigns, and yes, that does matter whether you want to admit it or not. And frankly, his matches are even more boring than Roman Reigns, if we're being so fucking honest. As I've talked about numerous times, I think in-ring work rate is overrated, and to the dipshits that will sit there and say, work rate matters in the real world, pfft, what the fuck real world are you working in? It's all about who you know, and who you screw, and whose ass you kiss. Work rate doesn't mean two fucking beans in the working world. Whatever teacher taught you that in high school should be fucking fired because they're fucking stupid. They have no clue about the reality of the real fucking world. Hard work matters. Get the fuck out of here. Especially in the corporate world. Are you fucking kidding me? But in the grand scheme of things, Roman Reigns from an in-ring standpoint to me, is more entertaining and compelling than Dean Ambrose. Well, that doesn't necessarily mean he's a whole lot of a better option, because if Ambrose is given the opportunity, I think he's much, much better on the mic and can carry things better than a Roman Reigns. You know, Bray Wyatt, I think Roman Reigns has had better matches than Bray Wyatt. I don't really think Bray Wyatt's character is all that compelling at this particular moment either. Two plus years, he's doing the same damn thing, and he's in the same fucking spot, saying the same fucking things. At some point in time, yes, it gets fucking old. You know, Bray Wyatt has a bit of a unique look, except for the fact that everybody's fucking around has the same type of beard as him, has a similar type of physique to him. No, I'm sorry. I think Roman Reigns is a better option than Bray Wyatt currently. 
you know, people will talk about Cesaro and giving him a shot. You know, we know the WWE doesn't buy into him. They don't believe in him. Yeah, Cesaro is great in the fucking ring. I love watching Cesaro perform in the ring. There's no question about it. You know, but is there really a character there? At least Roman Reigns has some semblance of some type of character, some type of personality, some type of persona that Cesaro completely fucking lacks. He just does. And Cesaro on the mic most certainly isn't going to be better than Roman Reigns on the mic. The, the whole point I'm getting at here is then we get to Kevin Owens and that whole thing. And the company's getting lazy with that fucking character, too. They get fucking doing the same shit with him that they do with every freaking buddy else. And Kevin Owens, yes, he could talk better than Roman Reigns, and he can work in the ring better than Roman Reigns, but at the end of the day, is he really that much of a better option than Roman Reigns? I don't know that he is. Well, this whole notion of you have to turn the guy heel because he's not good as a babyface is stupid. It's like the whole argument for years, well, turn John Cena heel... And that'll instantly make him better. No, he fucking doesn't. Because if they write for him like shit and they book for him like shit and their creative ideas for that heel character are shit, it's not going to matter. And at the end of the day, in large part for the WWE, it doesn't fucking matter. Because you don't have a whole lot of clear-cut heels and baby faces in today's business. And especially in the WWE. You have segments and pockets you know, this wrestler appeals to this group. This wrestler appeals to that group. If anything, it's eerily reminiscent of the WWWF of the 1970s with guys like Bruno Sammartino and Pedro Morales and so on and so forth. Guys that would appeal to certain ethnic pockets within the larger fan base. You know, some of them ended up being kind of unanimously over, but a different time, different era in the business either way. But now you look at it as... No matter what you do with Roman Reigns, is he ever really going to truly be fully fucking over with everybody? Is he truly going to be all the way over as a fucking babyface with everybody? The answer is no. Is that really going to change where he's going to be unanimously fucking over in the right way as a heel if you turn him to that side of the fence? No, because if anything... You're still going to have male fans that don't particularly like him. Some might like if you did something a little bit different with him, but that's most certainly not any guarantee. Some of the kids might not like him as much, but the women are still going to fawn for him, and you end up still with the split fucking audience, all the while knowing that the WWE isn't going to do anything compelling or interesting with the Roman Reigns heel character like they don't do with the Roman Reigns babyface character again. What the fuck is the difference? When in doubt, heal him out only works if you're actually going to do something different with the character. And if you're going to go in a radically different direction, and you're going to develop that heel character well, what in the bluest of blue fucks makes you think that WWE would do a Roman Reigns heel turn right? They won't buy into it. They won't believe in it. And as we know with experience with WWE, if they're not bought into the concept, if they don't believe in the concept... They're going to bury the concept, even if they do fucking go there, to prove a fucking point, because that's how petty this company is, and that's how lazy and stupid this company is from a creative standpoint. So no, Roman Reigns turning heel on Sunday and winning the belt that way, or turning heel and not winning the title, fucking over Ambrose, that's not the fucking answer. Because now you're basically rebooting and you're starting all freaking over for the people that sit there and say, well, he's been pounded down your throats. You're really saying that compared to, let's say, a Seth Rollins who had an eight-month-long title reign? He's the one that actually won the belt at WrestleMania 31? He was the one that got to wrestle Sting and a bunch of other different people? You're going to tell me that Roman Reigns is actually being pounded down your fucking throat? I realize John Cena is gone, for the moment at least. So you need a new punching bag. And you see this future potential Cena 2.0 in the midst. And you're saying to yourself, that's my new punching bag. I'll find some other way to vent your frustrations. Because at the end of the day, is it even Roman Reigns' fault? Similar to, is it Cesaro's fault? Is it Dean Ambrose's fault? Is it Kevin Owens' fault? Was it Seth Rollins' fault? Was it even CM Punk or Daniel Bryan's fault? No! At the end of the day, it doesn't fucking matter. And that's what I hope some of you at least take out of this video. Is talking about Roman Reigns turning heel is a fucking waste of time because a heel turn for him would be a waste of time. And for some of the so-called legends of the business like Austin and others that probably think this is a good idea, they're fucking stupid too. They have no clue what the fuck they're talking about whatsoever. Because the WWE clearly isn't bought into it, clearly doesn't believe in it, 
And even if they went there, like I said, they would eventually bury it because it wasn't their idea to do it to begin with. If they haven't turned Cena heel in a freaking decade, and they envision Roman Reigns as they clearly do, as that type of heir to the throne, what the hell makes you think that they want to play around and dick around with this character right now, knowing that they probably, if anything, want to create another WrestleMania moment with Roman Reigns at WrestleMania 32? When in doubt, heal him out. Yes, I understand sometimes that's true. But again, at the end of the day, it's not going to make that much of a difference. For a lot of you, Roman Reigns is going to suck as a heel just like he sucked as a baby face. So what the hell is going to be different? For the people that like Roman Reigns as a face, they're probably still going to like him as a heel. You're just changing the perspective, but all the other fucking scenery is the exact same. And if that's the case, why do it? How about this? Instead of always resorting to this kind of hardcore book fan bullshit of when in doubt, heal them out, or the best way to go because they're more interesting is to heal them, how about the WWE just write and book baby faces better? How about giving fans a real reason to get behind Roman Reigns? How about giving fans a real reason to emotionally buy into and invest in the fucking Roman Reigns babyface character? Instead of always having to do these knee-jerk reflectionary moves or whatever the fuck you want to call them, how about you just do better with what you got? How about this company just write better? How about this company just develop characters better? How about this company just get you bought into people better? The best way and the only way to make Roman Reigns work as a top guy is that way. Is to book him better as a baby face. Period. That's the answer. Fuck turning them heel. They ain't gonna fix anything.